we, we will recess. Mr. Fortenberry. Thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary, for appearing today. I'm sure there are other ways and easier ways you can make a living. And so I do want to say from the outset I appreciate your professionalism and dedication to public service during these difficult times and in spite of the tensions around these policies. Thank you. Uh, there is an article in today's Omaha World Herald. It's basically the headline. It says, Banks Remain Strong, referring to our local banks despite profit decline. And the director of our banking system in Nebraska says, on average, they're very soundly operated. Now, these are fundamentally local banks, not the outside banks that are there. But an editorial comment before I start the questioning. It, I, I believe it is th these local institutions, mainly owned by local families, that have proximity to their portfolio obligations, which by their very nature then are more transparent as well as accountable. And I think that's a lesson that we need to think through as we look at uh, the entire systemic crises, difficulties, mm -hmm. however you want to term it. In, in that regard, as I said in my er earlier statement, and I appreciate the Chairman's intent to unpack this further, perhaps later, and maybe we'll see you again, are the, are our finance, is our financial system, are our financial institutions too consolidated? You have nine banks now with approximately 50 percent of all deposited assets in this country. Uh, five banks, if I recall correctly, hold about 37 percent. Are we vulnerable because of that reason? I think we clearly are. Look where we are today. Look at the actions we've had to take to support systemic institutions. There's no question that we must undergo as a country very thoughtful regulatory reform to look at what our financial system should look like in the future to make sure that we're not here again. There's no question. Uh, you know, there, there are benefits to scale, but when the cost, because these institutions get to be so big, are then going to be borne by the taxpayers, that's a real problem. I appreciate that insight. Now let me lose, move to a second, more specific question. Uh, it's my understanding that Goldman Sachs, the recipient of about $10 billion in TARP funds, actually repurchased their own stock to the tune of $2 billion last December. Now, earlier you had said this is a prohibited activity. Can you explain? Sure. Um, I don't have the details of the, uh, of the Goldman transaction. My understanding of it, because I think the chairman put out some data on this in the last few days, is that in the case of Goldman, my understanding is those were stocks that were repurchased over the course of the year, but reported at the end of the year is my understanding. We've put in place restrictions. They cannot buy back their stock. The only way they can buy back their stock is if it's part of a normal, ongoing uh, share plan for their employees. So if they want to incentivize, if some of these banks incentivize their employees with, let's say, restricted stock, and they want to maintain their share account, we enabled that one carve out. So if you want to incentivize your employees over the long term, then you can buy back the shares that are only those shares that are associated with the long-term uh, compensation agreements. That's the only place where firms under the capital purchase program are able to buy back their stock. Is that exception consistent with what happened with Goldman Sachs? Uh, in that case, I don't know because my understanding of that, and I haven't looked at it in detail, but I can, my understanding is the bulk of those share repurchases were done before Treasury became an investor in Goldman Sachs. And so those would have, been, because it happened before we went in, it would not be subject to our The gentleman would yield. That's my understanding, too. Is that right? Okay. All right. Thank you. The third question is related to uh, Mr. Welsh's question as well. Please explain how extensively you actually review the books of these companies receiving TARP funds. We review applications as they apply to the TARP. So they have an application that they submit to their regulator. The regulator, in many cases, has been regulating these institutions for many years. For the large institutions, the regulators are physically on site. The regulators look at all of the data they have on these institutions and prepare a recommendation to Treasury. We then review that, that recommendation from the regulator and the data they provide us, and we review the application in making our decision on whether or not to invest. Uh, and I can walk you through that decision process if you're interested. For the vast majority of banks, ongoing review. Ongo for, for the vast majority of banks, you know, I mentioned we've invested in 489 banks so far. 30 more, 40 more each week, we do not go in and do ongoing uh, going through their books. Again, we've taken a policy perspective that the vast majority of these are healthy, well-run institutions. We just want them to make good commercial decisions and extend loans in their communities. It's, it's the one-off cases that we've had to go in and look at a lot of detailed analytics around their financial position, their balance sheet, et cetera, when determining are they systemic, 
do we need to step in? How much do we need to step in? Can, can you name those institutions and then how frequently you are doing this review? Well, in the one-off cases, it's been the auto companies, the auto finance companies, uh, AIG, Citigroup, Bank of America are the one-off cases that we've had. We've done something extraordinary. In each case, we've gone in in a lot of detail. Remember, with the regulators, the regulators are on site. They're the ones sending us regular updates on what's happening at the banks, what's happening with their portfolios. So, so they're et embedded. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, may I ask you unanimous consent to ask Mr. Keshkari just two questions, not to be answered right now, but since you have the whole day, uh, if. McC